this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the biggest HTC smartphone yet. This is the HTC One Max, a 5.9 inch Android smartphone. Same basic styling as the One Series, just a whole lot more of it, and we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the HTC One Max, for those of you who really want to live large. 5.9 inch display, so close enough to 6 inches to call it that. We're talking almost tablet size, going beyond the famous phablet name right here. Still has a lovely super LCD display, wide viewing angles, full 1080p, great color saturation, outdoor viewable, which is nice. Good white whites on this. Compared to super AMOLED displays used on Samsung phones, a better outdoor viewability, more natural colors, but you won't get the super zingy colors or the deep blacks that you do on super AMOLED, which also means you're going to give up on outdoor viewability on super AMOLED. So I'll take the HTC One display over most displays on the market any day. The good news is pretty much this is an HTC One only bigger. The bad news, it's an HTC One only bigger. The original HTC One came out in April, and we'd have loved to see HTC take more chances and make bigger jumps in specifications and features. Really, the only thing they've done besides enlarge this phone is add the fingerprint scanner on the back, which is not one of my favorite features. It's right there. I, you can't see it when you're using the phone, obviously, because it's on the back side, but the idea is when you hold the phone, you think hopefully your finger will be somewhere near there, and it kind of is, although well, you'd be stroking the camera lens too, which is not ideal. It works the, the same way that it did on laptops of old. That means you drag your finger across the scanner. It's not like the iPhone where you just rest your finger on there and it unlocks the phone. You also have to first unlock the phone with the power button, and then swipe if you're using the security to actually unlock the phone. You can use the scanner to launch up to three applications, but you can't use it for making purchases, say, on the Google Play Store. I find using it is kind of hit or miss, so as something that you're going to use quickly to unlock the phone, it's not so great. And if you fail after about five or ten attempts, then it's just going to make you put in your password instead. Don't forget your password, because if you do, then you're going to have to hard reset the phone using the multi-finger method, which is to press down the power button and the volume down while booting to get into bootloader to wipe your phone out. Inside we have the same Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 quad-core CPU, 1.7 gigahertz that's so used in the HTC One and the Samsung Galaxy S4 also, which is a fine CPU and a reasonably good performer, Adreno 320 graphics, but we don't have the Snapdragon 800, typically clocked at 2.2 gigahertz, with Adreno 330 graphics that we've had in the most recent Android phones, making this seem a little lackluster in comparison in terms of specs. Now honestly, it's a fast enough phone but marketing specs are important to a lot of folks, and those of you who have to go with two years on your contract, you want the fastest possible. We'd have loved to see HTC go with the Snapdragon 800 in this. Now, though the back is removable, you do not get access to the battery. To keep it as thin as it is, though it's not the skinniest phone on the planet, certainly HTC still maintain their pyramid design inside of stack components. The battery is not removable. The other difference is the back is removable. There's actually a little release lever right there, so you don't have to go fiddling and yanking on things too much, and it comes off very easily. It's a nice piece of metal here. And there's our micro SD card slot, something we would have loved to have seen on the regular HTC One, so you can expand that 32 gigs of storage and use this for media files, your Word documents, your music, your videos, all that kind of thing. HTC has not customized the operating system like Samsung did to allow application storage on cards, so you're still going to put your apps on internal storage, but with 32 gigs, that's fine. And your SIM card slot is here. No access to the battery. We have some tape over here covering some more internals and the battery. I can feel it underneath here. 3300 milliamp battery, so that's a large battery, especially for a Snapdragon 600, not as demanding as the 800. So you're going to get good battery life with this easily, making it through a day we did. Now putting this door back on, you see there's all sorts of little tabs that you have to line up all around. And if you don't get them just right, you have a kind of uneven cover. So I find I have to get the side lined up here, get it just lined up just right, then make sure the top ones are lined up or I get a little humpy, dumpy up here, and then make sure the bottom's lined up. So it's not as simple as it looks, unfortunately. Once you get it on, it fits pretty well. Not quite the attention to exquisite detail on the HTC One, which has less of the polycarbonate showing. We have a metal chamfer on the HTC One. This is a little bit more like the Mini. Now, some people have picked on the build quality, and they were reviewing pre-release phones. It's pretty good on this, I'll say that. 
Uh, one thing that's going to bug you perfectionists out there who love your HTC One for its perfect perfect build, this little corner always sticks up a little bit here. That seems to be the true of all units. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just seems to be that the latch is a little bit looser there. You can push it down. It's going to come back up on its very own just a little bit, but there it is. So this is a huge phone. Make no bones about it. I've been using phablets for quite some time. I was fond of the original Note phone and used that for a year, uh, but this is pushing the envelope. I find this about impossible to use one hand and I have large hands. I can wrap my hand around it but handling this in the car at a stoplight I just nearly drop it because it's fairly thick and it's 7.7 .7 ounces. It's pretty darn heavy. A Kindle Paperwhite weighs 7.4 ounces in comparison so this is actually heavier than a Kindle Paperwhite. And the Apple iPad Mini with Retina display weighs 12 ounces versus 7.7 .7. so you're talking about a lot of weight here. And how about size? We're going to compare it to the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2.7 that's available also on Sprint for size comparison. Here you can see not that far apart. Let's just put them one on top of the other so you can get an idea. You are talking nearly tablet land when you talk about seven, six inch phones here versus seven inch tablets. And the Nokia Lumia 1520 is also going to be a big and hitter but it's not going to be as thick as this so it's actually a little bit easier to handle. And if we compare this next to the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 phablet with a 5.7 versus 5.9 inch display, say what you will about Samsung and their plastics, but it does allow them to make a smaller, lighter device, which also has a removable battery. So you can see that I find the Note 3 is about as big a phone as I can handle comfortably with one hand. And you still have to use two hands to reach to the opposite edge of the screen, that sort of thing. But I mean just holding it without feeling that you're going to toss it up in the air or drop it by accident. Obviously, in terms of quality, you're getting nice metal over here. You're getting the faux leather on the back of our Samsung. Around the same price for these. Sprint's playing with the pricing right now on the HTC One Max. It's supposed to be $249 with a two-year contract, $599 without contract extension. But at this moment on their website, they're selling it for $149 with contract. So you get the idea. Lastly, just for grins and giggles, here it is with the iPhone 5S four inch display so it looks like a miniature phone doesn't it really obviously these are for two very different customers it's not just Android versus iOS but it's what size you prefer up front we still have the same high quality camera for video chat and on the rear we have the HTC ultra pixel camera yet again not changed from the HTC one now that's good and bad it's a very nice camera for taking low light shots it has those extra large pixel sensors so it can handle low light shots very well. The bad news is it's equivalent to only 4 megapixels. So these days of high resolution everything, high resolution screens on your smartphone and we have giant resolution and ultrabooks coming out these days, 4 megapixel images just, well, you know, they're kind of small and doesn't really give you much room for doing things like cropping in without having sudden lossy pictures. But anyway, we've got it right here focused on our Galaxy. Tap to focus. Quick enough, we can switch to videos just as quick as that and it's going to immediately start recording video. No optical image stabilization here. We would have really liked to see that because the bigger the phone the easier it is to kind of wobble it around and have some motion going on there but sorry not the case. For photos it's generally not going to make any kind of difference. And if we want to add photo effects it's just like the HTC one so we won't go over this in detail. It's a very nice camera got a lot of features in it just the resolution is starting to feel a little bit long in the tooth. And of course you have your Zoe effect here for your four second neat little videos. And the gallery has calmed down a little bit. It's not so fraught with uh, social networking stuff, which is a good thing. A bunch of pictures taken outdoors so you can see how those look. And honestly it looks great for on-screen kind of photography and if, as long as you don't need really big pictures it's, it does a good job with exposure. You can see the highlights and the silver here are not too blown out. So it's not a bad camera overall. Other software changes have to do with HTC Sense 5.5. Now, some of you are not real fond of BlinkFeed, which is HTC's answer to Flipboard and their partnership with Samsung. You don't have to have this at all anymore. If you don't want, you can set it to not be your main screen if you do want to keep it on. All you have to do is press and hold on the desktop here, and you can get all sorts of customization. BlinkFeed on and off right there at your fingertips. You can set home screen and pick any of your home screens. You can add another home screen, and you can pick from all sorts of nice widgets. 
So it's good that they gave us the ability to axe Blink Feed if we want to. The Blink Feed is growing up with RSS feeds and some other stuff. I actually don't mind it. I don't want it to be my main home screen, but it is a handy way to pick up news and do content discovery and to look see what's going on in your social networks. Phone is running Android 4.3 and HTC Sense like customization. Again, things that I like. We got our weather right here. We have a clock up here. We have pretty clean aperture goes up and down instead of the default Android sideways and since this is a Sprint phone they've got some Sprint software on here like Sprint TV they've partnered with Lookout for in a virus kind of stuff we have CBS Sports One Weather Bacon Reader Telenef Scout is on here Key VPN so they've added their own software nothing egregious nothing too terribly bloaty I think most Sprint customers will be fine with this stuff in terms of speed, it feels fast enough. The Snapdragon 600 is certainly an adequate processor. If you're launching really big, heavy games, you'll notice the launch times, load times are a little bit longer on the 600 versus the 800, but it's not anything terrible. And we're going to test out Asphalt 800 for you a little later so you can see how it plays some of today's most demanding games. You see TV over here, and that's because it has the same IR blaster as the HTC One. That's all the rage on smartphones right up here. This is no longer doubling as the power button, which is fine by me, who wants to schmear up their IR blaster window. And also because the phone is so big, it's really impossible to reach up here with one hand. So they've moved the power button to the side. It's nice spun metal right here next to the volume rocker. It's a little bit more accessible. The 3.5 millimeter jack is up top and the usual micro USB port is on the bottom. Phone has boom sound speakers. The Beats branding is gone since they're separating from Dr. Dre and Beats. And just as loud as the HTC One, at least. It's even louder because it's bigger, so they have room for bigger drivers here. Big stereo sound. It does elongate the phone to accommodate these speakers, but the sound is more than worth it. Let's check out a YouTube video and see how that sounds. We've got, got both the standard WebKit web browser on here and Chrome. And... Right now we're in the WebKit web browser. Good performance here. And let's take a look at a video to see how it plays. You can see how they've customized the WebKit web browser in ways that I don't particularly appreciate. But you can turn a lot of that customization off if you want, or just use Chrome, too. And we are doing this over Wi-Fi. Sprint's LTE service is not super duper fast here. Review. We're going to look at one of the more innovative Windows 8 PCs on the market. This is the it's Sony Vio volume. Flip. We have the 13-inch model, and sure, it looks like a tablet right now, 13.3-inch display, full HD. Nice tapered design, 2.89 pounds, so, you know, it's a bit to hold up, and you're probably going to rest it on the desk and maybe... So really good speakers, obviously great for full HD video playback, any kind of streaming content that you want to play on this, be it Netflix or anything else. Nice experience, great for YouTube as well. And some of the best audio you're going to have from built-in speakers. Now, is it worth it to you to have a device that's even bigger to accommodate those speakers? That's up to you and how much you would rather use headphones, headset, or your speakers. In terms of benchmark synthetic performance, you can see we on Tutu on screen here, 26,287, which it proclaims itself as great as you saw flashing across the screen. The numbers are where we would expect them to be for a Snapdragon 600, which is to say quite good. Not up there with the 800, but still very good. Quadrant score 12,175. 3D Mark Ice Storm Extreme Test scored 7,004 and 25.7 frames per second for the demo test. Graphics Benchmark 2.7, the Egypt 2.5 off-screen test, 42 frames per second. That's quite good. Sun Spider was very respectable, 824 milliseconds. As Android phone goes, phones go, that's pretty good. Not up there with the iPhone. Sorry to say there for you iOS haters, but that is in the 400 millisecond range, so difference there. Call quality on the phone is good. It has a little bit of that kind of CDMA digitized sound that's typical of Sprint phones and sometimes even Verizon phones. That's not the HTC One Max's fault. One thing I will tell you is getting the earpiece lined up and the mouthpiece is not too easy. Fortunately, the microphone is fairly sensitive, so you really don't have to worry about getting this end close to your face while you have this lined up with your ear. Giant dialer there, no problem whatsoever using that. Usual call history, access to contacts, that sort of thing. Data speeds on the phone. In our area of Dallas, this is pretty par for the course for Sprint LTE right now. We average about 7 megabit per second down and 6 megabit per second up on LTE, which is certainly fast enough for speedy web browsing, not as fast as AT&T or Verizon in our area. 
HTC still went with the back and the home button and instead of the usual three button design down here but if you double tap you can get to the multitasking right there which is pretty darn handy if you press and hold it you can get to Google now and then we have our back button right there and the buttons are normal sensitivity and the HTC logo does not it's just a logo and then we're going to test out Asphalt 8 Airborne one of the more beautiful racing games currently on the market and very demanding you can hear how loud it is. I'll turn that down a little bit. Certainly looks gorgeous enough. I mean, it's a lovely screen and hard to beat how pretty the graphics are in this game. But let's see how the frame rates are because this is notoriously pretty demanding. And it's fairly smooth. I see it getting a little bit choppy once in a while, but it's not holding me back from passing the crowd. Certainly smooth enough to have a little fun being intentionally destructive with the game, but uh, I would like it to see a little bit smoother. Another great use for a giant 1080p display is reading books. So we have Google Play Books pre-installed. We're going to take a look at how that renders. Very nice, very sharp text. We're talking high pixel density, or like 373 ppi pixel density. And the white is white, which is very nice, too. So very easy on the eyes, very pleasing to read. For those of you who are thinking about reasons why you need a bigger screen, this would be one that it's really very enjoyable. So in the end, the HTC One Max really is pretty much just an HTC One only bigger. You get the fingerprint scanner on the back. I don't consider that to be a value added. It's just not really working smoothly and conveniently enough for, to, for me to love that. I do like the fact that you get expandable storage here, but basically if you're trying to decide between this and the HTC One, it really is just a matter of which size you prefer. So that's the HTC One Max. It's available now on Sprint, and if you like the HTC One but you said more, I want more, well this would be the phone for you. Otherwise really it is pretty much the HTC One in every way, just made bigger and with an added fingerprint scanner. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.